Today for EMN5, we're going to review the Scarbosa criteria. So first of all, let's talk about what you use the Scarbosa criteria for. The reason this criteria exists is because it's very difficult sometimes to determine if an acute MI is happening in the presence of a left bundle branch block. So let's talk about first what a normal left bundle branch looks like. A normal left bundle should be appropriately discordant. This means that the T wave should be deflected in the opposite direction as the QRS. And here's some examples. So here's a V1, you have the QRS going down, and then your J point in the T wave should be deflected opposite, so appropriately discordant, and so it's in the positive direction. Here you have an example in V6 where you have a positive QRS and a negatively deflected T wave. So that's normal. That is a normal left bundle branch block with appropriate discordance. The reason that's important is because if you see a left bundle with concordant waves, that could be very concerning that you're looking at an acute MI. So here are the criteria outlined by Scarbosa that indicate an acute MI could be present in the setting of either a left bundle or a paced rhythm. The first one here is probably the most important because it's the highest indicator of acute MI. It's when you have an ST elevation greater than one millimeter concordant with a QRS complex. Now this is pretty hard to all imagine, so I'm going to use another diagram to explain each of these three criteria. This is put out by EMS 12 lead blog. So here's a diagram of each of the criteria. So here's this first one again, very concerning, very high sensitivity for acute MI. You have a positive QRS complex and a positive T wave and G point elevation. That's concordant and should be very concerning. And here the criteria says that this concordant wave here should be greater than one millimeter. So that's your first one to look out for. Let's go over here to our second one. This is in V1, 2, or 3. You're going to have your discordant waves in general. Your QRS is negative here and a positive T wave. And here you have a depression that is concordant with the QRS, so it's in the same direction. So you have an ST depression or J point depression greater than one millimeter. So that's your second criteria. Also highly concerning for acute MI. And third, we have here in the middle, we have our discordant waves as we would expect for a left bundle. Here's our negative QRS and our positive T wave. And you have an elevation that is greater than five millimeters. So basically that's the Scarbosa criteria. It helps us distinguish between a left bundle and an acute MI. And here's the quick summary again. Now I wanted to go through two EKGs that have examples of each of these. So here's our first EKG. We have a left bundle. Let's start out looking at V5 and 6 here. So here's 5 and 6 here at the bottom. And you can also see this in AVL, actually. So you have concordant waves. So you have a positive QRS, positive T wave, and a positive J point deflection with greater than one millimeter of elevation. So here you can see that in V5, greater than one millimeter in V6, and over here in AVL, greater than one millimeter in AVL. Very, very concerning for acute MI. Now you also have discordant ST elevation greater than five millimeters in V3. So here's our one, two, and three. We have appropriately discordant waves. However, here in V3, you can see this elevation here, the J point is about five millimeters higher. So you have a greater than five millimeter ST elevation in discordant waves. And then here's the example of that last one. This is actually in a paced rhythm. So remember I said this could either be paced or in a left bundle. And in V2, we have an example of discordant waves, so downward QRS, upward T wave. However, there's a G point or a ST depression that is concordant with our QRS complex that is greater than one millimeter. Very concerning for acute MI, and there's a really good example in V2. So thanks a lot for joining us on EMN5. Here's some other great references. Check out the EKG tutorials by Dr. Amal Machu. And these two dates have some great explanations of the Sagarbosa criteria as well.